everyone. Welcome to an exciting adventure into the world of investing, a journey that could shape your financial future in ways you might not have imagined. Let's be real, with prices skyrocketing and the cost of living climbing higher every day, simply working a traditional job may not be enough to achieve your big dreams. Whether it's buying that first car, saving for a dream vacation, or just building a safety net, we can't just rely on our paychecks. We need a strategy that helps make our money work just as hard as we do, if not harder. Today we're diving into the basics of investing, where we'll explore the fascinating world of stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. What are these investment tools and why should you care? It's simple. They're your keys to unlocking financial growth and freedom. So if you've ever felt like there's got to be more to managing your money than just saving a little each month, you're absolutely right. Investing is the secret sauce that can help you navigate the economic ups and downs and set yourself up for success. My name is Mike. I have 20 years in the financial services industry, working with some of the largest firms off and on Wall Street. I have a master's with a concentration in finance. I have um, former licenses um, to trade stocks, bonds, and talk to you about all types of investments and why we need them in our everyday lives. So let me help you break down these concepts, demystify the jargon, and show you how investing can be an essential part of your financial toolkit. Ready to start building a brighter, more secure future? Let's get started. Galvanized Financial. That is the company that is dedicated to increasing financial literacy and business acumen of underrepresented and underserved communities. Welcome to Introduction to Investments 101. It's a great time to be alive, ladies and gentlemen. So, why are we here? I'm here to teach and help you learn as well as understand basic concepts of investments and why it's important. First, as young adults and, you know, new investors coming into the market, you first have to learn to earn money, right? That's one of the first things you, you, you do. You know, you're a young child, you're growing up. Some of the key concepts and principles your parents try to teach you is how to earn money. And there's a lot of ways we can do that. When you want to buy something, you, do, you typically set a goal and you earn money to pay for it. We got to set these goals and plan for the things we want and, and especially the things we need. The best way to do that is to always make a plan. You have to plan to save your money and when you receive your money, okay, you know, definitely, you know, enjoy, you know, the fruits of your hard work, but you need to learn how to save some of that money and save as much as you can. You have to become a world-class saver, right? You know, most people on average are saving about 4%. You need to get that to where you're saving about 15% of your money. 20% of your money would be ideal. We need you to be a world-class saver. Once you plan to do that, you start to lay the foundation for your financial success. Um, my father always says, it's not what you make, it's what you keep, okay? So let's not get all enamored and excited if we are making a lot of money. If it's going out of the, our pocket, you know, right away or out the back door once we make it, we're not being as efficient or effective with the use of that money. So we need to save it. We need to save some of it. So what are some ways? You may have started out, you know, doing chores around the house. Then you graduated to working a job or, you know, working for someone, receiving a paycheck, you know, every two weeks or however you're paid, you know, working a job, traditional way of making income in America. But then you have entrepreneurship, working for yourself, you know, like, like I said in the beginning of this um, presentation, it is a great time to be alive. Young people out there, you don't have to wait to make money in this day and age as a young person. There are nine-year-olds, 13-year-olds, 
you know, um, you know, with YouTube channels, um, selling products, opening boxes of new toys, whatever it is, just you have to be creative and innovative. And right now, with the with the use of social media, you know, broader use of the internet, it is so much easier in this day and age to become an entrepreneur. You just have to think, think of some ways, um, young people. What are some ways? That you can now make money younger. It's, it's no time to start. The better time to start is now. Start now. For the true time value of money when it comes to your age. The earlier you start making income or making money to secure your financial future, the better you are in the long run. And the last key piece to that is to bring it all together, we have to start to invest. We're going to save, but we have to shift to investing in which this is now allowing to let your money work for you so now for all the money that you receive all the income you receive it's not from you your effort your effort alone i should say it's from the markets investing will allow you to passively bring money in without you having to physically physically go out and work for it you have to think of more ways to make that type of income we're only one person. There's only 24 hours in the day, seven days in a week. If you're making, if you have to generate all the money yourself physically by hand or however you make it, we're not being as efficient again as we should be. We have to move to investing. So we need to set your goal of making and saving money so you can afford to do all the things you want to do and buy whatever you need and want in life. Like I said, nothing wrong with working a job. Whatever it is, a trade, you make money, however you're making it at, at your job or in your position, you save it and you make it. And you put it away. You become an entrepreneur. You know, one of the biggest entrepreneurs out there, Elon Musk, very innovative. Think about it. This man is trying to put us in Mar on Mars doing a lot of innovative things don't don't let your mind you know be limited think about all the things that you can do you're smart you, you have technology you have information you don't have to go to a library and, and show your library card and sit there all your information is at your fingertips young people utilize it to the best of your ability and then once you can invest you can invest like one of our best investors that we have you know one of the world's mo uh, most powerful people one of the world's most known investors mr warren buffett now this slide is a little old you know he's worth way more than 74 billion right now he's the ceo of berkshire hathaway okay large publicly traded company that you can invest in anyone can invest in and we're going to talk a little bit more about that later so after you earn your money someone gives it to you as a gift what are you going to do with it where are we going now that we little, know a little bit more about money let's let's give one more way of getting some what other way can we think of we talked about it a little bit you become an investor by investing your money in the financial markets that's how you're going to do it so what does investing mean Investing means letting your money make money for you. You already cover ways to earn it, but now let's shift to talk about investing it. You know, why you do it, and very importantly, how you do it. Let's talk about stocks. Stocks are a way of owning a portion of a company. Now, a very small portion of a company, but yet yeah, you do own it. So I don't care if it's Facebook, Apple, Netflix, Google, some of the largest companies in America, if you buy a share of one of these companies, you actually own it. It's actually yours. You know? Think about that. Nike. You have you have people have Jordans. You you go out and buy the, you know, the the Nike uh the the, the dunks. All the different types. However, you can also buy the stock. And right now, I think it's trading about, as, uh, as the date of this video, 
think it's trading around 70 75 dollars or so some of the sneakers are, or most of the sneakers are more expensive than the stock itself again you can you can buy nike you know lebron has sneakers that are made by nike you can own a piece of that a very small piece yet again but you can still own it if looking at these are stock certificates you know you typically don't get stock certificates in this day and age um you usually have a, a brokerage account i don't care if it's with fidelity vanguard whoever you typically have your stock in an account robin hood you have it in an account you don't actually see the paper form they're now held in what's called street name this basic fancy word for it, it's just deposited into account and this is actually if you requested a stock certificate um they would send you something like this and this and these are two examples of them very old examples but these are examples i've seen the disney stock certificate it has you know um it's very it's, it's beautiful it's, it's it's a lot of artwork on it you know the the, uh, the walt disney um you know the the castle uh, mickey you know you have all the ca you know the characters it, it's great so that's the stock certificate and so you can have the certificate and actually show ownership physical ownership of it but typically like i said it's in an account somewhere but that is your ownership that is your representative portion of that company that you hold if you think about stock and ownership if let's say you and i on this call on, on this pre in this presentation have a business and we create a business together i don't care we're selling i don't know we're selling cotton candy it doesn't even matter and we go public and that stock trades on an exchange and people are buying and selling our cotton candy stock if we own it together if we if our business falls apart there's no real you know there's no real penalty um for that happening now we, we may lose everything we lose our money but we, i really can't sue you you can't sue me it's ownership and, and whether we win or we lose we have to accept that that is what that is the responsibility of being an owner you know that's a requirement of being an owner that can happen so this is truly ownership if you're holding stock and it happens to go to zero you know um you have to claim it as a loss and, and, and try to uh, select a better stock the next time or what have you. But that's ownership. You own it for better or for worse. You have to kind of ride with that. So stocks typically are more risky than a lot of your investments. Because of that risk, you have market risk. You can't get away from market risk. You can't get away from it. If you have stock in the market, it's, a, you know, it's susceptible to market risk. It's also called non-diversifiable risk, okay? Can't get away from it. So let's talk about the alternative or another option, which is bonds. For broader terms, fixed income. We're going to keep it simple and just say bonds. But fixed income is the asset class. But, but fixed income or bonds are a way of lending, lending a company government um, or government money to help them stay in business. So the government has bonds. Companies have bonds. Um, state municipalities have bonds. So when you when they lend money, when they lend money, you know to these organizations, you get paid for it, right? So this is very different than a stock. This is actually debt. This is debt. So this is so basically it goes like this: this exchange. If somebody came to you and asked you for for some money, said, "Hey," I would like to, you know, um, I need money. I, I need some money from you. I have a great business idea. I need a thousand dollars. What would be your natural um, question for them? Okay, you want a thousand dollars from me? For what? Okay, to to run, start my business. Okay, when am I going to get my money back? It's probably a question you would ask. Let's say they say a year. Okay, so I'm going to lose. My 1,000 or the benefit of holding my 1,000 in my pocket for a year. What else are you going to pay me for that? There should be an additional payment because that money is not in my pocket. If I give you my $1,000 and that $1,000 is no longer in my pocket, I can't, you know, take my family on a trip, maybe. Or I can't, or I'm going to, or it, I might not be able to put food in my refrigerator. 
So there has to be a cost for that, an additional cost. So maybe the person says 6%, all right, 6%. That's what I can give you. Well, let's say 10%. Let's be a little, be a little more generous. Let's say 10%. 10% of $1,000 is $100. You with me? So let's say at the end of a year when you have to pay that $1,000 that you originally borrowed plus $100, which is called interest for that additional level of risk, that is what you're going to receive back. So you will receive back $1,100. Your principal is that $1,000 and that interest will be, you know, the $100, which is the 10% that you require for them to borrow that $1,000 from you. It's that simple. So that is debt. We are not partners. We are not, we are not together in this. We are, I am not an owner in your idea, business, or enterprise. You're coming to me for a loan, in essence. And you have to pay that back to me with interest. That, ladies and gentlemen, my novice investors, young investors, that's a bond or fixed income. It's debt. Whereas stock is ownership. Fixed income or bonds is IOU. If you do not pay me back my 1000 oh, I have recourse. I can come after you because that was a bond, a bond. You said you would pay me back. Unlike a stock, bond is debt. So, a bo so bonds is less risky or well, in essence because bonds, like I mentioned earlier, are typically issued by the U.S. government, the federal government, to fund projects or whatever they need it for, state municipalities like your cities, and companies, corp, you know, corporate debt. And typically, government bonds are risk-free. Why? What's why? Why are these? Why are these government bonds and these government uh, fixed income risk-free? because the government has the power of taxation. If they don't have it, they're going to get it. Where are they gonna get it from? You. So it's, it's, it's less risky than a, a stock. So you, can, you, so you can pick, you can go with, if you're, if you're aggressive and you want you know ownership and you can bear that risk, you probably are more weighted towards the stock side. But if you're more conservative, hey, can't lose my money. I need my money. Work hard for my money. I'm nervous. I'm scared. Hey, it's okay. We got some for you too. You go more on the fixed income side. That makes sense? Perfect. Now, let's talk a little bit about the third. The third tool. Very powerful tool. It's called the mutual fund. But before we get into that, I just want to go through a quick exercise. So if you're looking at the screen right now, you have window one and window two. My question to you is, if you had a rock and what you needed to do with that rock is you would have to throw the rock through either window one or window two. But the objective is to do the least amount of damage which window would you throw the rock through? Would it be window one? Or would it be window two? I bet most of you picked window two. Why did you pick window two? You picked window two because if you threw a rock, and if it was just, you know, a decent sized rock, and you threw it through one of the windows, you would probably hit one of the smaller panes within the, the windows. Like you have 12 panes in one window. If you threw a rock, you probably hit one of them and you probably destroy one of the 12 panes. However, if you threw that rock, that same rock through window one, which is the single pane window, you would basically shatter the whole window. Break the whole window. We don't want to do that. We want to minimize our loss with that window. We want to throw the rock through the window and then we only have to patch up the one pane and then we're whole again. 
that symbolizes the mutual fund. Why? A mutual fund is like a is like a window, a basket. And typically, it's a, a professional uses this big pot of money to buy a variety of investments. And it could be a basket or a variety of stocks, or it can be a variety or mix of bonds or fixed income. So a mutual fund is like a basket of stocks or bonds. So typically you have 10 top holdings. So let's take like the S&P 500, which is the 500 largest stocks in America. So you have the Facebooks of the world, the Apples of the world, the Netflix, the Googles, all the la- all large securities. You can you can buy them in one bucket, one basket, one mutual fund. It's called one fund. You can buy all of these things. It's a great tool because it diversifies, spreads out your risk. So again, like that window pane analogy, if you have 10, 12 stocks, one is going down, two are going down. You have the other ones that may not be. They may be rising or or staying. So it basically helps you spread out your risk. You don't have all your eggs in one basket like a stock. You have a mix or a basket of stocks. Some of the three largest mutual fund companies out there are Vanguard Group, Fidelity, and BlackRock. Vanguard is a very unique company because hey, their funds, a lot of them are low cost. They have active managed funds, but they also have you know index funds that you can put your money into an index like that S&P 500 I mentioned, which is the largest 500 companies in the nation. And they do it at a very low cost because this is the issue. The market, the financial markets go up and down. Remember, we have market risk with the financial markets. It's gonna go up and down. We can't control that. But what we can control are our expenses. So Vanguard has very low expenses when you're investing in their funds. So that's a great benefit that you wanna use because the lower the expense, you know, the more apt. So if you have a, a, a larger return, you're gonna reap the benefit of that because you're not paying a lot in expenses or fees. It's a great, great benefit. Think about these companies when, when you're thinking about looking and researching mutual funds. If you want to get that basket of stocks or basket of fixed income securities instead of just picking one stock or one bond, okay? So, you know, one of the questions I also get is, okay, I understand there's these stocks out there, you know, where do I start? You know, I don't, I don't know. There's so many of them. How do you know which ones to pick? Great question. I like to think about, you know, personally, I like to look at Warren Buffett. Warren Buffett, as I mentioned, one of the world's richest men, you know, what world-class investor, top investor that we can learn a lot from. He says, buy what you like, buy what you know. You know, if you like, you know, he likes Coke. So he invests in Coke. If you're a young lady or, you know, you might like Louis Vuitton bags. There, you can buy it. Louis, you know, they, they, they trade, they trade, they trade publicly. You can buy Louis Vuitton stock. Um, you, you like cosmetics, Ulta Beauty, you can buy them, right? They're, they're out there. You can buy that stock. It's publicly traded. If you're into gaming, you, you can buy that. As a matter of fact, gaming is a sector that's experienced a lot of growth over time. You know, you have companies like, let's say Activision. You guys love Call of Duty, right? You heard of Call of Duty, World of Warcraft. Okay, you can actually buy Activision stock. You like the game? Maybe you want to invest in the company because you own a little piece of it. Electronic Arts, Madden. One of the biggest, one of the biggest game franchises, Grand Theft Auto. I believe in 2026 they're launching Grand Theft Auto 6. 
Take Two Interactive. PTWL was the symbol. Now, I'm not recommending securities. This is purely educational. I'm not recommending these, these securities or these stocks. I'm just saying, think about it. Do what you like. Do what you like. This is, this is something that you could research from here and decide if it's something that you want to invest in. If you like the company and maybe they have, you know, great earnings, maybe they're well run, you know, they've been around for, for a while. You, you look at some of these things, maybe, you know, you can invest in these companies and benefit from their growth outside of you working every day. And you can start, this is a starting point. You look at the stock, you, st you, you may find a, a website like, I don't know, Yahoo Finance to put the symbol in so you can find some basic details, yahoofinance.com. You know, but there's a there's a, a million of them out there. You put in the symbol, read up on the company. Can you look at the, maybe look at the news? Are they, do they have any new developments, new products on the horizon? You start to, once you start investing, you start thinking about these companies as an owner. You want to know what's going on, but this is your starting point. This is a sector that you can, that you can look at gaming as a, as a young person, maybe this interests you. I'm just saying, and I'm illustrating the point that it doesn't have to be this complicated thing for you not to do anything. You can start thinking about investments and securities, but start with what you know, what you're comfortable with. That's the starting point. Okay. So listen, I hope you under, I hope you learned something today. We went through, you know, stocks, you know, bonds and mutual funds and started, you know, talking about ways you can kind of look at specific investments and maybe start to build out your portfolio. But more presentations like this on the way we're going to talk more about you know your your asset mix things to think about how to analyze certain securities but this is galvanized financial we're signing off this is where money is earned through lessons learned and one of the things i always like to finish with you know my old high school motto was diligence crowns her suitors it's another way of saying that hard work pays off so if you do the work you will get the benefit but you have to work this is a competitive environment you know prices are high inflation is through the roof you have to position yourself for the future and it starts with investing so i want you to practice hard work yes enjoy life there's a time and place to play but i want you to know that your hard work will pay off and you, while you're young, you wanna do this now, okay? So on a count of three, I wanna say one, two, three, hard work. Thank you everybody, see you next time.